Hello everybody, this is Tekka. What we're going to be doing in this video is talking about the new release of Fedora 36. The release is a little bit later than we expected, but you can go to the Fedora website, download it and try it out for yourself. Or if you're currently running Fedora 35, you can go ahead and upgrade to the latest version. What we're going to be doing in this video is covering some of the primary changes from 35 to 36. But most important, I'm going to be giving you my full in-depth review of Fedora 36. I've been using the beta version on this computer since its release, and I've been using Fedora as a whole as my main Linux distribution for, I think, around 10 months or so. I have the main GNOME version installed on my desktop computer, and I have a dual boot on my laptop running the Fedora KDE spin, and overall the experience has been remarkable. But that does not necessarily mean that it has been absolutely perfect. There are definitely some cons, and we will be diving into the pros and cons of Fedora as a whole in this video. But first, before we get into the changes and my review, we're going to need to thank the sponsor of today's video, Linode. So you probably heard me talk about Linode before. It is a fantastic service to go ahead and spin up your very own Linux servers to basically do anything you'd want to do on a Linux server from hosting websites, game servers, just about anything. I'm using it for techhut.tv and my very own Nextcloud instance. And I've installed both of those using their one-click installers. And if you don't want to use their one-click installers, they have a whole bunch of Linux distributions to choose from. So you can go ahead and easily spin up your very own Fedora server. And better yet, if you use the link in the description, you could get a $100 60-day credit to go ahead and try out Linode today. So first, we're going to quickly cover some of the changes. I did cover a lot of this in previous videos going over the beta and going over GNOME 42, which that, again, is the primary change. GNOME 42 itself contains things like the new system-wide dark mode, new screenshot and screencasting tools that you can access using the print screen button, but it also has a bunch of other cool features. There has been improvements with the fonts, the Noto font, is now used for foreign non-Latin based languages, which fixes some font rendering inconsistencies and NVIDIA users will finally have Wayland support. And you heard me right, the default session for NVIDIA, even if you're using their proprietary drivers, is going to be Wayland. And this right here is my GNOME 42 workspace and we've covered a lot of these changes. If you go into files, we have the new icon. This is their system-wide dark mode. If I jump into settings, we do have these wallpapers that switch between light and dark mode, but unfortunately they don't have the option to have it automatically change, which is what I was really hoping for. There's some new applications, including this uh, text editor right here, which is simply called text editor. This is replacing G edit. Now, one thing we're not seeing, at least as of yet, is the new uh, console application. We are still rocking the uh, terminal application here, which is at version 42, so it has been updated, so that is awesome. And of course, being that this is a distribution release, oh, basically all of the packages are going to have new versions, including some of the other spins. So if you're on KDE Plasma, you're going to get all of those new updates. If you're on LXDE, you're going to get those new updates etc. And I'm going to be linking down below to some of the official release notes so you can check out some more of these updates. And with that, I want to get into my review of Fedora, what makes it great, and some of the things that they could probably improve upon. So first, I'm going to start with some of the pros of Fedora, and that is the packages. Fedora always tends to ship with the latest and greatest packages. Even GNOME, for example, Fedora got a whole release with the latest version of GNOME uh, before even Arch Linux did, and Arch is supposed to be the rolling release distribution. And Fedora does all this while maintaining impressive stability. They have a whole system that they use to actually go ahead and test various packages, just to make sure there are no major issues before actually pushing out these updates. And a primary benefit for it actually being a fixed release system, even though it's a very frequent fixed release system, is the fact that they're able to actually hold back updates to some of the core components, preventing the need to fix things while your system is still going. And because of these frequent fixed releases, Fedora is still on the bleeding edge of things when it comes to uh, various packages and updates. And this is historically true, as Fedora was the first distribution to ship System D and many other popular Linux packages, such as Wayland, which we're now seeing in this release for NVIDIA users, Pipewire, and BetterFS. So in general, Fedora is the distribution that tends to fully adopt and support new technologies. And probably my favorite thing about Fedora is just how plain and vanilla it is. 
This is a good thing because you get what you're supposed to get with the ecosystems that you choose. For example, the GNOME desktop, which is their primary desktop, it ships with one extension for branding. There's no custom theming or anything. You get what you are supposed to get with whatever desktop environment that you choose. So whatever spin or flavor of Fedora you install, you'll notice some slight branding changes, maybe a different icon on the taskbar for the start button and maybe a different wallpaper, but that's really about it. And this is a really nice break from almost every other distribution, which is just Arch or Ubuntu with a bunch of themes and extensions added to it, which ends up kind of bloating the system and slowing it down. Additionally, Fedora has Copper, which is very similar to PPAs or the AUR, where anyone can get or build their own repo and make their own packages for Fedora. And you will find quite a few popular packages on Copper, primarily because of how easy it is to package for it. Now, if you've been following this channel for some time, you probably know I got this laptop, which is not friendly for Linux at all. It's an Intel laptop with a NVIDIA 3070, and even installing Windows on it kind of sucks because you have to like load drivers to get to recognize the SSD. It's, it's just not a fun thing to deal with. And out of any of the Linux distributions that I tried to put on that thing, Fedora was the only one that just worked. I, I say that just worked lightly. There's still uh, quite a few things that I had to do to tweak and fix it to make it work properly. But it, it was the one that I was just able to install. Then the video drivers worked completely fine. And after a little bit of tweaking and some minor configurations, it was an absolute pleasure to use with that laptop. That's the one I have the Fedora KDE spin on, which KDE Plasma does a really good job with high resolution displays and scaling in general. So that is why I'm using that. And like I said earlier, it's just vanilla KDE. So it doesn't have a bunch of different tweaks, changes, themes, or anything like that. I could just install it. It's pure vanilla and that's honestly how I like my KDE Plasma. So I've said a lot of good things about Fedora, and with that, there are definitely some cons and some things holding it back from truly being the clear winner when it comes to the best Linux distribution. In my personal opinion, it's the best, but with these changes or these fixes, I think that it would turn from opinion to fact. First things first, DNF, their package manager, the package management system in Fedora is painstakingly slow. And generally the Fedora community seems to shrug off that fact, but it is really one of the big things holding it back. And yes, there are some things that you can do to improve the performance. You could go into the DNF configuration and enable caching for what repositories it uses, enable the fastest repository, enable parallel downloads. There's a lot of things that you could do, but even with that, if you compare it to something like installing something through Pac-Man, you are gonna notice a huge difference in speed. For me personally, it's not that big of a deal. I tend to be doing so much on the computer at once that I don't notice, but when I am like installing something and I'm trying to get it quick and you're sitting there waiting for it, go through all the repositories real quick and try to find that initial download, it's it's a little bit annoying. It's kind of annoying. And that alone just gives just another talking point for people to kind of talk crap about the distribution. Now there is something that might help this in the future. I think that it might come with Fedora 38 or a later version. And that is something called micro DNF, which is said to increase performance and give it a better feel and a better interface within the terminal. How it's kind of described, I have an article linked down below if you're interested in reading about this. It might be similar to the Nala application, which is a APT replacement that I covered earlier on the channel, which just looks remarkable when you're actually using it and it's very quick. But again, it, the micro DNF thing might not be coming for a good while, but I'm excited to see uh, if that's developed further and what it eventually becomes. Now the final issue for me and probably a lot of new users is non-FOSS packages. And for a lot of people, this could be a good thing. Then we might have to get this little section of this review and move it up into the pros, depending on who you are. Fedora in general has very strict guidelines when it comes to shipping non-free software in their repositories. Packages like NVIDIA drivers, media codecs, common applications like Steam, Discord are not gonna be in those NVIDIA repositories. Granted, uh, a lot of these, especially the applications you could just get with Flatpak, but if you're installing Linux, for the first time and it happens to be Fedora. And if the first thing you do is open up the web browser, go to YouTube 
and you think your sound card doesn't work, that's really not a good look. What you actually have to do from there is go to uh, RPM Fusion, uh, copy paste a couple commands. You can use the little click installers to do it as well to make sure everything's up and working, but there should be some sort of button within like the welcome screen for Fedora that allows you to enable RPM Fusion. There's an option to enable third-party repositories, but that doesn't really add any of this uh, non-free and open source components. So it would just be nice if there was a much easier option to go ahead and enable the RPM Fusion repositories on your Fedora system. So overall, Fedora is my favorite distribution. It's a very good distribution, and it's the one that I would recommend to just about anybody. It's the perfect combination of stability and bleeding edge while maintaining the vanilla experience that you're supposed to with whatever desktop environment that you go with. It does have its faults, but they're not that big of a deal, but they are faults nonetheless. If again, you're interested in checking out the specific change log for Fedora 36, I'll be linking to that down below and I'll be linking to the main Fedora website. So you can go ahead and grab the disk image, install it on your system, throw it in the VM, whatever you want, play around with it. Um, you're bound to have a little bit of fun. So with all that, a uh, big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. You guys are fantastic. Uh, yeah, have a beautiful day and goodbye.